So welcome to the channel and the topic of this video is, is it hard? Is it hard to walk the Camino? Yes and no. I'll explain, coming right up. So a lot of people who've never walked a Camino feel a little bit kind of oh, confronted with the idea of walking huge distances. Well, you don't have to, of course, because um, if you just want to get the Compostela in Santiago, you can walk 100 kilometers from Saria or somewhere else. Uh, so it's not necessarily about huge distances. But if you're going to walk a much longer Camino, then it can be pretty tricky. Now, before I go any further about is walking the Camino hard, let me just say what it isn't. It isn't mountain hiking, mountain climbing. It isn't a through hike, to use that American term. Um, some people who are used to very arduous long distance hiking, like you know, over mountain tops and things, come and walk the Camino and go, oh, that was pretty simple. From a physical point of view, yeah, it is. Um, and it's definitely not like walking the Appalachian Trail or the Pacific Crest Trail or whatever that, those ones are in America. Um, Compared to those, it's a Sunday walk, day after day, but it's not easy. Now, let me explain why. So my very first Camino was um, in 2015, and I walked the Camino Frances. I should add, that's the only one I've walked to date. I've done that one three times. Um, and I walked the Camino Frances, which is about 800 kilometers uh, from southern France, over the Pyrenees, across northwest Spain, to Santiago de Compostela. Um, now, you probably do need to do a little bit of training for that. Um, I was a bit lax. I didn't do enough training. I was probably five to ten kilos overweight. All right, I'll own up, ten kilos overweight uh, and not particularly fit. So why do I mention that? Because I made it uh, and I've done three, kind of in that condition. Is it necessary to be fit? No. You'll see a lot of people walking it who are a bit overweight and are obviously not, um, you know, athletic types and sports types. But let me tell you this. If you're not fit and you're a bit overweight like me, it hurts. Okay, it hurts more than it needs to. Um, and so for my next one, which I hope will be the Via de la Plata from Seville, which is about a thousand Ks, um, it, it's deemed to be a bit harder than the Francis because the villages are further apart and you, you may have to walk longer days. I've got to be fitter and lighter for that. So being a good 10 kilos overweight, what was the impact? Um, I hurt my joints, I hurt my, my knees, my ankles, uh, I got shin splints. Um, it was just harder work than it needed to be. So I was carrying a backpack of six kilos, you know, it was like carrying a backpack of 16 kilos unnecessarily. So I don't want you to sort of panic about getting fit. You don't have to be super fit. Um, generally, the training for that I do for the Camino, uh, I, I just do a little bit of walking lo locally. Cardio uh, exercise is good. Obviously, I'm going to have to do more of that next time. Um, strengthening exercises in your legs. Uh, core exercises, you know, that's good to, to get the back um, strong as well. You know, you don't have to go mad. If, if you're reasonably fit, um, you know, and you can walk five or ten k's, you know, without any trouble, that's a good start point. Um, so I might um, do another video about the actual training because there's a few things um, that maybe I can point in the right direction that I didn't do um, that I will be doing next time. So first of all, do you need to be fit? Not really, but it helps. It will make your journey a lot more pleasant. Having said that, there are, I've seen lots and lots of much younger, fitter people get injured. Um, and the reason that that happens is that their youth and enthusiasm kind of gets on top of them uh, and they push themselves too far, too fast, too early. And uh, if you talk to anyone who's a bit older and who's walked quite a few Caminos, um, they always say, start out slow, work into it. Um, because it's a very arduous thing. I mean, it, you, you might think, I, I don't walk 
long distances each day, I find my sweet spot is about 22 k's, so somewhere between 20 and 25 k's. When I push up to about 30, uh, my ankles start to hurt and you know I start to get injury. Um, so you think, well, that, that's not far. Yeah, but do it every day for you know over a month, and what happens is it's a real um, you know it causes a lot of fatigue in the body. Um, you know you can. You, a lot of people do get injuries, apart from blisters and things like that, but muscle, muscle, injuries, muscle injuries. So um, there's a bit of a, a sort of mixed message there. I, I, I don't mean it to be, but yes, you can do it uh, unfit. I, I kind of had this stupid idea that I'll get fit in the first few days. You know, I'll just walk slowly. Uh, and in fact, that, that's what I did uh, when I first took my wife on a Camino. I think we're the first day, because she wasn't very fit and we hadn't done much training, I think we walked seven k's on the first day and then 10 and 12 and 15 and gradually built it up. And after about a week, she was more than comfortable walking 25 k's. Um, but when you're quite a bit overweight, like I am, uh, losing weight is a good thing to do. So you use that as an incentive to lose a bit of weight. Okay, so that's, that's the physical bit. Is it hard? As long as you're reasonably fit, uh, no, it's not. So when, why did I say right up front, yes and no? Because the hard bit isn't the physical bit, not, not in my mind at least. The hard bit for me is the emotional and spiritual component of it. So what do I mean by that? Well, um, a lot of people who've walked a few Caminos will talk about there being three phases of your Camino. Um, there is the physical phase, the emotional phase, and the spiritual phase. And let, let me tell you how these unfold. And I, I think the walking a Camino requires a lot more mental strength than physical strength. So what tends to happen is that, um, and I should just point out here, you'll understand why when I explain these three phases, why I don't like walking shorter Caminos. Uh, it's got to be at least 400 Ks. You'll understand why in a minute. So the physical phase is literally the first few days when you complete the day and you know obviously depending how fit you are you're going oh geez my, my feet are hurting my thighs are hurting you know for the first few days you ache in places that you didn't even know could ache um, and you know you need to be careful uh, and not strain yourself too much in those first days as you settle down to the routine of walking all day every day depending you know, how much distance you want to do each day. But after a few days, uh, and I generally find it takes me about five days to get into it, that physical element, you start to kind of get into your rhythm. Um, and it becomes a lot more comfortable, your body is loosening up, and you know, your joints are loosening up, you're more flexible, your, your, your cardio is better. Uh, I find I'm, I'm finding it um, not as hard you know, to, to walk the distance each day, whatever distance you're gonna walk. Um, and it actually starts to become reasonably comfortable, as long as you don't push yourself. If you push yourself too hard, too fast, too early, then you end up with blisters. And we might do a whole video on blisters and blister treatment. But anyway, phase one, the physical. You should be over that within five or six days. You then hit the next phase, uh, which people often call the emotional phase. And that is where you start sort of getting games going on in your head. And you might be starting to think, oh, you know, I'm, I'm physically able to do this, but... Oh, do I really want to do this every day? Um, and you know, I've enjoyed the scenery, and but do I really want to do this for another 30 days or, or whatever distance it is? Um, and you might start to feel a bit lonely if you're walking on your own. I, I have got another video about walking alone or with other people. Do watch that one. Um, I actually recommend walking on your own. You'll understand if you watch that one. So there's all, all these sort of things going on in your head. Uh, with me, I was feeling guilt. Uh, because on my first one, my wife Pat was back at home looking after a sick father, and I thought, oh, you know, I shouldn't be here, I should be going home. Uh, and there's all this stuff going on in your head, and, and you've just got to kind of work through that. So that, that second phase could take another five or seven days. So you see, you're already kind of two weeks into it. Uh, it takes a couple of weeks, basically, to get into it. 
And then you, with, with luck, you hit that third phase, uh, and that I will call the spiritual phase. So a lot of people are walking the Camino for religious reasons, spiritual reasons, a lot, probably a lot more, are not. Uh, so don't, don't feel that you, know, you have to be religious to walk the Camino, you certainly don't. Um, but what I would suggest, if you have an ounce of spirituality in you anywhere, um, kind of be open. Uh, I always say walk with an open heart and an open mind and, and be open to whatever experience has come along and some amazing things will happen. Uh, that first Camino of mine on my own back in 2015, whoa, I'll, I'll, in a later video I'll share some of the stories that happened. Um, I mean it wasn't quite burning bush stuff but it was very close um, and two or three things happened during that first Camino that could only have happened with the intervention of some higher power, to be honest. You'll, you'll understand when I tell you the stories. Um, and, and some amazing things went on and, and uh, I, I, had a, I started to develop a very different outlook on life. Um, and it was, yeah, this really cool sort of Zen state. I mean, it was amazing. So when people say, is it hard? Let me just recap. Physically, the first week or so is, depending what your state of fitness and health is like, depending if you're overweight or not, like me. Um, so try to, um, you know, prepare a little bit, you know, lose weight if, if you're grossly overweight, get a little bit of exercise and so on, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. Otherwise, that first phase is gonna to be tough. Um, and I have walked with people who are very unfit and very overweight, who really never got through that first physical phase because they were just struggling with, with you know, fitness problems and um, injuries and, and things like that. So do yourself a favor and, and try to be a bit fitter before you go. So there's that bit, there's the emotional bit, which that knocks people out, I tell you. Um, we met some lovely people on our last Camino in 2018 and yeah, some of them bailed by the time we got to Burgos, which, uh, oh, I forget, it's, it's less than two weeks into it, uh, because they had struggled with the physical and emotional bit, and then phew, no, they wanted to go home. So that's the hard bit. If you can get through that and then get into this more spiritual phase where you've, you've overcome the physical and emotional, oh, that is when the Camino magic happens. So... I said I would explain why a short Camino doesn't work for me, because it takes me two weeks. Or well, it's a little bit quicker now because I'm used to it, but I need to be walking for eight or 10 days to reach that third phase. And if I'm walking for 10 days, it's kind of, you know, just got into my stride then by the time it's happening. Very uh, interesting when I took Pat on her first Camino, um, that was a short one of about 200 Ks. Uh, and, I, and we actually kind of hopped along the Camino a bit. I wanted her to, to see some of the amazing sights. And so we hopped along and just walked short stretches as, as we were sort of building up fitness and things like that. And then we walked probably from uh, complete from about the last 140 Ks. Uh, but we'd done a few sort of shorter days prior to that. So at least that way she got to experience different bits of it. And then, you know, had a 140 K walk into Santiago. On that very final day walking into Santiago, I said to her, how's it, all, how's it all coming together? Because she struggled a little bit physically and emotionally, and she was on top of the world that last day, and she went, oh, it's finishing. I wish it was going on more. Um, and, and then foolishly, I said, do you feel like walking from Saint-Jean next time, 800 Ks? She said, yes. <laughs> so that's just a further illustration that, you know, it takes eight, 10 days at least to kind of get into the whole swing of it. So I, I feel somewhat sorry for people who can only get a couple of weeks off to walk because they will do sections. But I do know people who go back every year and they'll, they'll walk the next section, the next section. Uh, and because they're used to it, they kind of get into the groove very quick. Uh, but if, if, if it's your first Camino, just expect that it does, you will go through those three phases. Uh, you know, if you're really lucky, you might get through phase one and two in a week. Um, but it does take you a while to settle down into the routine, physically, emotionally, and then you know into that um, that spiritual phase, which is the best bit. So there you go. Um, seems like a very simple question. Is it hard? 
uh, and it required a bit of a long answer, so my apologies for that. Um, if you're watching this thinking, ah, oh, this is easy because I've walked the Appalachian Trail and all the rest of it, the Camino's not that, okay? It's like a walk through the park. Uh, the, the physical walking bit is actually not that difficult. Um, you know, it's, it, it's good footpaths and tracks and, and all the rest of it. It's signposted all the way. Um, it, it's not a, a test in that sense. It's, it's a test, much more of a test emotionally and spiritually. So um, if, you're, if you're out for a you know, good hard hike, um, not sure the Camino is for you. It, it's more of a, for me, the, the Camino is more of an inner journey than an outer journey. And, and funnily enough, I might have mentioned this on another video. People say to me, oh, you, you must enjoy walking. I said, mm, not really. Uh, so you must do lots of walking when you're at home and bushwalking, which is what we call you know, hiking here in Australia. I said, no, nah, don't really enjoy bushwalking. So why do you love the Camino? Uh, and my, my standard answer is it's got nothing to do with walking. And for me, it isn't. So ponder on that a bit. <laughs> uh, I think that's it. Is it hard? So hopefully that's given you some thoughts around where it's hard. Uh, if there are any questions you have about this video or the Camino in general, do please comment below. I'm more than happy to, to answer them. I would much rather be doing that than working. So uh, the Camino is my passion and I, I am a bit of an addict. Um, even though I've only walked three, I hope to walk many, many more. So feel free to ask questions. Um, if you enjoy these videos, think about subscribing and hitting that little notification bell. Uh, that way you get notified every time a new video comes out. And I'll, I'll start doing them as often as I can, I think. Um, I, I have some other channels where I do a, a weekly video. They're business channels, but maybe I can do a weekly one here too. So thanks for watching and uh, I hope that was of some interest. See you soon. <laughs>